Oh, let me froze. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Reseller Niche Podcast uh, from myself, Mo. How's it going, Russ? It's going good, Mo. How are you? I'm good, good. I feel like I'm a little stuffed up, so if I sound nasally, that's why I'm talking through my nose and my ears are popping. <laughs> Maybe that's why earlier you could hear so good. You, you, your, Maybe. Your mics were. Maybe, yeah. Probably was the reason. Yeah. So let's take a look here. And today's topic, we had several topics today, several things we wanted to talk about. So we figured we kind of do a kind of a random reselling rants, I guess was what we're going to call it. Go over a couple of different things we were thinking about uh, just so we could cover different topics and without having to worry about uh, discussing one. So why don't we start off? So I think I got hold on one second here. Yeah, if you you're gonna pull up another screen that yeah, you had if there's a, I need to make, mute yeah, it. make make sure you mute that one, right? You'll start getting double feed. Yep. Oh, why did I do that? Okay, let's start again here. Okay, I pulled it up. <laughs> Okay, so your hair look, but your hair looks good, Mo. I just took my hat off. So oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's still there. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine same way. I got the you know it's all, I wore a hat all day, so it's kind of like all bunched up right there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like I never know what it looks like. It's kind of. I don't look in the mirror too much, as if you couldn't tell already. But <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> One of those things. Same way. Same way. So actually, that's a pretty good segue. We're, I was thinking about talking about the mindset and psychology of long-term reselling, which is something Russ was talking about. So um, uh, what do you think about that, Russ, in terms of well, – Well, uh, you know, there's definitely uh, – what I was thinking about today on that is like, you know, you have highs and lows, and you you push through them, and you just keep going, and you have your things, but it's just like life. Yeah. You know, everything is cyclical. You have good days. You have bad days. I don't care if you're, you know, the richest. I mean, I, you know, Elon Musk has bad days. Yeah. Um, you know, Gary V has bad days, and it's just how your mindset pushes through that. And I think that's something, you know, we talked we talked before about how things I learned by, by working in the oil fields or, you know, taking my, taking my uh, I guess, sabbatical out on the RV. I, I learned, especially in the oil field, just push through and you'll keep going. So, you know, you have to get that mindset because, man, if, especially if you're a full-time reseller and that that phone's not going off or you're not getting things it's real easy to get distracted and go oh uh, you know butterfly you know and and yeah you know or sit there and look through facebook marketplace for, for your next area uh, so you really have to get in that mindset about it's 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 going to be good days you know, what's that old john denver song that i reference a lot some days are diamond and some days are cold yep and exactly. are the yeah are the bad days fun? Do you, you know, who in God's green earth wants a bad day? Yeah, um, and I guess it's kind of also about um, perspective on that. I mean, it's one thing to you know kind of set yourself up to, you know, realize that every day is going to have its own challenges. Another thing is perspective on. I mean, in a weird way, if those bad days make the better days, the more you know, the days you think you've done more, uh, more fulfilling, I guess, and feel better. So it's, it's just kind of like, um, I mean, I, just for me, it, the last couple, I think for everybody, because we're coming into the slow season now, um, it's kind of where you have more time to think about things and you have days where like, you know, what happened? Did someone turn off the electricity? Did eBay did, go to sleep? Did eBay, you know, and then look how, and we've talked about this before too. Is look how life can can change in a moment, or you, yeah. know, you can design a change. And you're in the middle of moving cities, um, so stuff like that can affect you. But just that 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 mindset of just you're gonna make through it, 
if you're having a bad day, push through it um, and stay on focus. You know, it, a lot of time it is that just focus and keep plugging. Yeah. Uh, especially on a bad day because that's when you need to push. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's actually kind of a reason why I kind of missed these doing these shows for a couple of months here when we stopped doing them because um, you don't get as much like if you work the regular nine to five, um, you don't get that interaction a lot of times. Especially you, you were literally out <laughs> uh, in the if, desert, yes, yeah. by yourself basically. Yeah, and so, so you do, and you know we need that. We need that push. Sometimes it's a self push. Sometimes it's a buddy push. I know you and I will jump on the phone or we'll text and, hey, I'm having a great day or, you know, oh, this happened to me. And, yeah. you know, it is nice to have that commiserate in good and the bad. But it, it, it goes back to that mindset of just constantly pushing. Um, when I was in sales, we would say, you know, one day doesn't break a week, but one day can make a week. Yeah. And, you know, you can, you, everybody's been through them where you have just a day where, man, you can do nothing wrong in sales. Everything you, you get, all, you get great offers or you get, you know, your stuff you send in is, is moving and, you know, or people are contacting you on Facebook to buy it or Marketplace. So it's all working. And you're yeah. like, man, you know, that's, that's a, that's a no brainer day. You get through it. But on those bad days, you can turn that bad day into a good day, you know, by on eBay, list more, put more yeah. things on, on Facebook, marketplace or local Craigslist, um, send more into Amazon if you do FBA, you know, just because everybody's got something they can work on. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, yeah. And then that's yeah. that. I mean, I, ch I get down really easily when on those days, but I, I found that what if I can take my mind off stuff entirely in the sense that, Okay, I've got stuff to list. I can go out and source. I can just go get active. You know, um, uh, just activity, right. all that emotion right. creates something that kind of takes your mind away from anything that might have been bringing you down. The, it, whether it, and and uh, look at the things that can bring you down. You know, the, the the dog pooped in your shoes, or you know, just anything can ruin your day if you That's let right. it let it do it typically we humans let other humans ruin our day very quickly for silly and things too yeah it, it, for silly things they cut you off in traffic or you know they say the wrong thing so it's that silly thing so the psychology of long-term selling or, or <clears throat> excuse me the psychology of it is just push through you know i myself i i run a pretty high um when i'm when things are good i run a real high energy level and and i I race around <clears throat> as fast as I can race around now, but, but I'm, you know, my, my mind races, I get going. And when somebody tries to crash that, I don't let them yeah. on those good days on a bad day, man, that person can just really bother the snot out of me. And I'll think about it for 30 minutes or an hour. And you know, that's, that's not good. So you have to constantly push yourself on that. Uh, oh yeah. Another another thing to you know to think about, and I, and I, I never, I, I don't say these things because this is a real personal area. I don't say these things to say, hey, look at me or that type of thing. But the, I push through every day uh, a, a massive amount of pain, and I don't, as a rule, I don't, I don't take any medications for it. I just push through it. And on those real painful days, the my reselling takes that thought away from the pain. So it just falls in line with what you said, get your mind off of it. Yeah, you created that that channel to where you can may, maybe not take away the pain, but maybe take take away a few of the thoughts of the pain. Um, you, you don't focus on it. And it, yeah. you know, I've, I've said this recently about um, um, Stephen Hawking. You know, he lived 56 years with ALS, the Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah. The average lifespan, like 10% live over 10 years, 0% live 15. I mean, he lived 56. His mind controlled his, his, his body. I mean, his mind was, was it. That's what he was at. So he, he didn't care what his body was doing. Yeah. 
So, you know, yeah, that's amazing. basically, yeah, he willed himself to live 56 years. So if, if your mind can do that, if his mind can do that, our minds can push us to do better, to, to more sales, better items. And I always, I always like to go back to our theme of our original theme of research equals knowledge equals profit. Sometimes just learning something new. Yeah. Go, go pick an area. Go look at something on Facebook. Um, or Craigslist and say, I know nothing about, you know, widgets. So start digging into eBay and start learning about widgets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, uh, another thing I've heard a lot of people talk about is, you know what? If you are having one of those days where you can't source, like maybe that routine just needs to be broken up a little bit. Uh, maybe, I don't know, some people have certain days of the week where they go to certain stores and they only go to certain stores maybe it's time to completely flip your direction drive the opposite way uh, yeah, pick a different store a different aisle in a store i don't know something that flips it around pick yeah that's a good point mo you know either uh and, and that can be both ways is where there are some like myself i have to force myself into a routine yeah because because that produces better results for me yeah. So, and some people are so much in a routine, they have to force themselves out of that routine to produce better results. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm a little over the, all over the place. So I'm kind of a bad example. I'll get into a routine and it will take me a while to get there, but then I'll get stuck there. So I have to remember to kind of say, you know what, you, you know, you've been looking at this type of item. You're getting, you know, you've got too many of this. You need to kind of mix it up a little bit, do something else. Um, but, I mean, yeah, also getting back to the mindset, um, I, I don't know, I was reading a Facebook post and I think people were complaining about this. I think it was a Toys R Us and, you know, a lot. Of, I think 100% of Toys R Us is going bankrupt now. So these right. people were waiting in line. I guess they didn't get whatever coupon codes they got. They were given, I don't know what the coupon was, but it didn't work at the register. And then these people were complaining and then the guy that wrote the post was saying, well, just imagine the guy behind the counter, his job is gone tomorrow. Or, uh, you know. <laughs> um, there's always there's always somebody worse off. Yeah. Yeah. There's somebody somebody that yeah, boy, good point. Good point. Yeah. So cool. So yeah, it's it's one of those things that Yeah. And man, I have been through all the training. I've read all the books. And you can read all the books you want. You can learn all that aspect but that action takes it takes precedent over it all and you can have all the positive mental attitude in the world yeah on that on that aspect and it's something you just have to constantly train yourself with where our minds are geared negative for self-preservation so it's a it's an internal it's a constant internal fight and i think everybody fights it yeah and i think you, you struck in a key point there on the good days, maybe, you know, you're more open-minded, you're, you've got more energy, um, you're willing, you can take a few more punches and on those bad yeah. days, you know, it's like being sick, you know, you're most tired, you're most likely to get sick. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. When you're, when you're not true, true. Yeah. I see that, how that, you know, you're going to have a bet. You're, you're going to get into negative the more you, Get yeah. into, I mean, uh, perfect example is yeah. what we were talking about yesterday. We didn't really talk about this. It's kind of a segue um, because uh, I got a Vero strike yesterday. We were talking about this, and I posted it on Facebook, and I was kind of ranting a little bit. And then um, I think big we dog got, came in, didn't yeah, he? Big dog Griff <laughs> came in and kind of just said, well, you, know, you understand how that works. It's kind of more of a... I don't know if it's a federal level or a state level thing, but it's kind of just there as a reminder and a kind of a helper for actual the brands to be able to kick somebody off that's maybe, you know, copywriting, uh, infringing on a copyright, stealing something, right, you right. know, that kind of thing. So after and I eBay, kind of, yeah, after I eBay kind of has stopped, nothing on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I read in the thing and to be honest, I actually read some of that long drawn out copyright trademark infringement documentation right. and it's actually pretty clear cut when it comes to um i don't know anyone that does amazon merch you get that a lot with people copying phrases and stuff 
um, even if they feel like it's close to a copy of a logo or a phrase or something like that, they're all they can, 100% yeah. uh, backed by the government to uh, say, hey, you know what? You got to take that down. And, th and that's scary, Mo, as you and I talk for you. Yeah. You know, that now your whole, you know, you're, they say multiple times, you know, your eBay account will be suspended. Yeah. Well, you know, we live and breathe by our eBay accounts. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, my conclusion to that was, I mean, I did take a look at, I think they called it the DMCA. I think that's what it was, whatever the ruling was. And I, I mean, we're so, I mean, we're talking about eBay like it's been around for, it's not what, that was it 22 years, 21 years? 22, like right. It's, and that's one of the bigger sites. I mean, most sites haven't been around that long. So the idea of e-commerce is still so new. I just feel like brands in general are just coming around to the idea that they can take that kind of control, um, which is a good thing um, for, you know, a number of reasons. Like, you know, anybody that does private label knows about people jumping on their, their listing. Yeah copying it, stealing pictures and everything basically and profiting off your hard work. So I get it. Uh, I just feel like I, actually, and I feel like we're a long way away from kind of getting a clear cut guideline on how that's going to move forward. And I think half of it is because it's two different things. And I know we're kind of getting away from uh, what we originally talked about here, but um, you've got, brick and mortar stores like we talked about in previous episodes kind of going under, you know, you've got your Toys R Us, you know, multiple other stores possibly on the way or, or have already gone. And then you've got brands in general. You can, uh, you could take Nike, for example, that are still very strong. Uh, the brand is stronger than the actual, maybe Nike stores. Um, and they kind of uh, are going to obviously fight tooth and nail to, defend that, get everything out of it. And they want to be the ones profiting off their own brand, obviously. Right. So I don't, I'm not exactly sure how Congress or anyone even knows how to react to any of this because it's all so new. I mean, how, I mean, what are they going to say to, you know, let's just call it a, uh, an item that you buy at a Nike store. And then Nike says that's not authentic. And it's Nike saying this, I mean, what is eBay or Amazon going to say? They're going to say, "All right, all right." <laughs> That's well, they're, it. they're hand, you know, according to to the the law, truly, yeah. their hands are tied. So they I can. guess my point to all that was that I think we're a long way away from any real clear cut guidelines coming out to how to respond, other than to use more like common sense. I guess in my case, a shirt. I mean, it's a, it was like a five dollar T shirt, not a big deal. Um. But I do have to kind of tread lightly and remember that not only is it brands, but it's like logos, it's slogans, using them in your titles and kind of yeah. you just kind of have to watch out and kind of read the forums and see what other people are going through and kind of so just let's, tread lightly. Let's go back. Let's go back to our mini topic here. How yeah. did you handle that? I, you know, you first you first freaked out. Yeah. And oh my God, I'm, every, it's, we're done. And then I over. ranted. You know, I ranted and, is what I did. And ranted. <laughs> and then you went, okay, all right, well, you know, it's not that bad. Yeah. I understand. You know, now you're at the point where just kind of be a little watch, watchful, mindful of some of your titles or something, you know. Okay, so you're like, so, so you handled it. Yeah. I mean, uh, once you, you push through, it's not the end of the world that. Um, yeah. Uh, I looked, I did, I mean, it did watch a lot. Of, I was telling you, I, whoa, I watched all the YouTube videos. I was reading up on this and that. And, the, and, the, and the, you're always going to find like people that they'll, they'll talk about things and say, well, you can do X, Y, and Z, follow this step, do this, 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 and this. And I, yeah. at the end of the day, I'm like, wait, $5 t-shirt. Um, or I can do something else and maybe make $5 or make $5. hopefully a lot more than that. I mean, but I mean. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, you're also going to, you know, you're doing some stuff on YouTube. You're going to find the person that says that it's really all of the reptilian aliens fault. Yes. So <laughs> about any subject. That's you right. Know, you got it heroed is. because they're of watching the right reptilians. now. So, right. Yes. <laughs> There's always that fun aspect of YouTube. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I know it is not uh, it's not a fun thing it's not comfortable i mean nobody wants to hear it. and i know there's people that have legitimate issues and they've lost their accounts and all this i'm not saying that doesn't happen 
But right. at the same time, I guess we just kind of have to play it by on a kind of a case by case basis, figure out what the best way is to move forward rather we, than, we, yeah. Also, but, but, and we talked about another thing too, is to have a, pl a backup plan. Yes, absolutely. You know, if, have another account under your wife's name, spouse name, husband's name, whatever to, to go to that if you need to. I and mean, then I maybe even, and also like we talked about like other platforms, like we don't other just platform, yeah. platform. Um, you know, I, I, I sell on FBA and, and eBay. Um, I sell on merch. I have a few other platforms that I'm dabbling in, but I need to, to be honest, push more in those. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you got, you know, three We're, or four, then one goes down one day. I mean, with, with me starting back up, um, uh, after getting here in Savannah, if eBay, if, if I lost my eBay now, I would, I'm not even listening to my own words to a point because it's only been a month. Yeah, and man, I would, I would just, I'd be devastated. I mean, it was yeah. just, so, but I would sit there and go, all right, what am I going to do with this? Well, let's start putting it on Etsy. Let's start putting it on. So, you know, but, but have, yeah. have your I mean, backup I, plan ready. I think plan. about a year ago, I started looking at the cross listing software and then I have cross listed. I know people have talked recently about, you know, mm -hmm. they don't like this. They don't like that. I think cross listing is a, something that I need to get more into. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can do, I'm not saying I, one thing I would say is don't list things. Like I know there's, uh, people that sometimes, um, don't pay attention to that and you can get in trouble because of maybe you've sold it on one platform and then you don't take it off the other one and you run wow. into issues. I mean, that's, I guess the biggest fear, uh, but I mean, yeah, uh, if you're in that situation, that. you're selling that much, um, maybe you can divide up uh -huh. what you're selling then. I don't know. Um, get it and, you know it kind of goes back to that mindset thing mo if you have that backup plan that emergency plan that kind of sets your mind at ease yep. it should set your mind at ease you know isn't it much nicer to have you know the follower of dave ramsey it's much nicer to have that emergency fund yeah that way when you're you know when you're driving around in your car ch chunks you don't go oh my god what am i gonna do you go oh yep. so, you know have that emergency plan in in that aspect of it even nope. if it's just mindset yeah yeah no definitely what does he say two thousand dollars or something i'm not a big dave ramsey guy but i think he says two not enough people or not i forget the percentage don't have a thousand or two thousand dollars to fall back on if case something happens right um yeah. and it's a, it's it can a be a scary area. thing yeah so um, what what was the next topic we had kind of talked about well the next thing uh, is kind of completely different but i guess it's we can tie it in the mindset um how to lowball at garage sales and i guess you could kind of add to this <laughs> how to deal with lowball offers that you receive so lowballing in general um so why don't we start with at garage sales so we're the buyers we're buying we see something uh i mean i'm not saying rip somebody off but i'm just saying how to get the best most for your you know bang for your buck okay i'll I'll take the pure reseller's mindset on this. Um, now, if I, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll let's play sides on it, and I'll take the pure reseller's mind. Okay. When I run across something at a garage sale, and they have it listed, or they have, what do you want for that? Two dollars, and I know in my, in my, in my heart that that is a hundred dollar item, and it will sell tomorrow. That my first thought is, I used to think, man, am I taking advantage of people? Oh, yeah. But, I, I remember those yeah, thoughts. Yeah, you have that thought, am I taking advantage? But then in the reality of it is, they have the exact same ability I do to look that item up. Yeah. And they have the exact same ability as I do to sell that item online. Absolutely. So I was like, if they've made the choice, so I had to come to the point of they made a choice to put that item out there. I found a sweet camera a couple of weeks ago, two bucks. Boom, it sold for a hundred. Nice. And I did not, and I, and I did not, it, it doesn't even cross my mind. But so how to lowball at a garage sale? Just, just do it and you'd be surprised. Yes. 
I mean, I'll give you a perfect example about what you just talked about right there with where they can actually list it for something. I went to a garage sale probably three years ago, and I saw a box of action figures. They were X-Men. Oh, I'm blanking on the name, but X-Men action figures. Mm -hmm. And it was like they're all new in the box. There's like 15 of them. And there's no price there. And then it was early on a Friday morning. Nobody else there. And they were basically just putting out stuff. And then, like, the the husband came out, and he was putting out stuff. And then I said, oh, how about these? And he said, okay, my wife is putting those out. They're, they're our sons. Let me go and get her. She comes in two minutes, real friendly lady. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by the time she came out, I had picked several other things uh, that they did have prices on. And all the prices are super low. I'm talking, you know, $1 to $5. Um, different toys, different things, shoes, bo boots, all low price. So I picked three or four things. I always like to pick a bunch of things. And then, so I said, okay, how about these? Your husband said, you know, these are your uh, sons. And then she looked at me and then she said, uh, we do a lot of garage sales. We sell on eBay also. And as soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh no, here we go. Here it comes. Yeah. Yep. But she was actually very rational. She's all, I'm, I'm not going to do the thing where they put the eBay price on there. All I can tell you is that we're selling these for our son. He wanted to get as much as possible. So we told him, if we get a good offer, we'll sell them. That's why there's no price on here. Right. So it was pretty rational because everything else had a price except for those things. So I said, okay, so how much are they? And I think she said she wanted 20 bucks a piece, which, which was too high to pay for those. So I said, well, you know, what if I was to take them all? And I think there were 15 of them. And then she, I think she dropped the price down. We got down to like 12 bucks a piece. And right. then I think we, um, I was able to get it down to 10 bucks a piece by taking out two or three of them that our son really liked. But my point to all this is she was really rational and she was very honest. She said, I'm an eBay seller. I can do it for this price as long as we get what we need. So as long as she gets what she needs, you get what you need. You need. There's no need to feel bad about yeah, it. Yeah, that, that's a that real. That's that negotiating. Negotiating. You got to know the person. Kind of learn the person you're yep. negotiating against. Uh, if you would have walked in and lowballed and said, "I'll give you five a piece," she would have never dealt with you. Yeah. You know, and so then my my, my suggestion there. for big, like if you see like 10, 15, 20 of something. And you, especially if you don't see a price on there, I always ask them to give out the price. Like everyone, don't be the first guy to give out the price. Oh yeah, that's that. And unless uh, there's, I think a bona fide Chris would say something about sometimes if they're him holly, just come out. But I, here, ten bucks. Yeah, you know, kind of take control and just you know, then it's then like here, it's a real thing. Bucks. Then it's like oh, you made yeah. it real now. Yeah. So it's like there is uh, that that aspect of it. Um, I think me and my nephew, when we used to go out garage sale and we played a game called the quarter game. Okay. And we would take a handful of quarters and we would see, this is, this is even before we did reselling. We would see um, what we could get for a quarter. Nice. Just to see how, just to see how low you could go. And it was, and it was funny because we try not to crack each other up when you're, you know, they're like, Oh, what do you want for that? Well, how much will you give me? A quarter. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it's, an, it's just that obscure, you know, that's an obscene. Just as a side note, what's the worst response you ever got from that? Like angry response? <laughs> uh, no, you, there never really was an angry. Oh, they really? just go, oh, okay. oh, no. You know, they, they, okay. either, they, if they start laughing, then that, you know, they take it as that. But it's, it's been so, as we played that game quite a, quite a long time. It was amazing the amount of stuff we could get and, and eventually talk them down to. I remember there was this one cake pan and this gal said, you know, oh, it's $5. And I said, I'll give you a quarter. And and the, the thing was, if you lost that, we kept track of okay. know, who, which quarter and, and who got the junkiest stuff, who got the best stuff, whatever. And, and this gal was like, cake pan was $5. And I said, I'll give you a quarter. And we went back and forth. And just back, and, oh no, you know we. Oh, your your wife's gonna, you're, you know, you, are you married? Back and forth, I finally said, look, quarter's my top, my top, top offer. <laughs> she took, the, she took the quarter. Oh, oh my! I wish I had that on tape. That, that's <laughs> that, awesome. that would have been, yeah, it was a fun. And another time, my nephew walks up. He, this guy's got two TVs. You know what I'm talking about? The big heavy. Yeah. And yeah, he yeah. sees, and he says, "What do you want for it?" And the guy goes, 
well, what are you offering? My nephew goes, uh, a quarter. <laughs> and the guy, the guy kind of rubbed his chin, like had to think about it. A, a whole 25 cents. Rubs his chin and goes, all right. <laughs> and and it was just like the, it's it's, it's an, a bizarre social experience to do that game, but so you you realize something, you know, people are doing garage sales for a couple of reasons to get yeah. rid of things. Um, so sometimes they just they want to want to go. I mean, I bought in boxes of hats. All right, make me an offer on that box of hats. Quarter, take them, yeah, and I'll make a couple hundred bucks out of those, out of that box. I mean, it's just, it's really, it, they're, they're giving stuff away. Most stuff at a garage sale, as you well know, is going to end up at Goodwill at the end of the day. Yeah. That doesn't sell. Yeah. So we ran out of time not, moving, uh, moving out of our house. So otherwise I was going to have one of those garage sales where I was yeah. going to put, I was going to put a quarter, but I was going to put a dollar on everything. Yeah. Every, I was going to make one big Whatever, sign that said everything a dollar. Everything a dollar. I mean, there's a whole there's a whole corporation based on everything's a dollar. Yeah. So yeah, and just just move it out. And it's it is really funny how you can lowball. Now, I, if if they come up with this offer, a lot of times I'll play this game where they say, "Well, make me an offer," and I'll say, "Look, my offer might offend you, and I don't want to offend you <laughs> because I'm gonna tell you what I want to pay for it." Yeah. Well, okay, offer two bucks oh no that's too low well then what's what's another offer and a lot of times i'll go that that low i'll just make the offer so absurdly low like a quarter and they'll go oh you know five bucks so now we kind of set that precedent of of where we're at on that aspect of it but when i buy lots of it i bought a lot recently the lady said oh i've got to have 300 for that lot before i even went over and looked at it and I said, okay, went over, looked at it, started explaining it to her. And I said, I'll give you, you know, I think 60 bucks. Well, I knew the value of the lot. She did too. She took the 60 bucks and that was a, a low ball offer. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, 60 to 300, there's, there's quite a big 70. I think is what I paid for this 60, 70. That's quite a big change. Yes. You wouldn't accept that offer on eBay if it was handed to you. So okay, this is a good segue now. Right. Now, us as sellers getting a low ball offer and I get them all the time because I do best offers. Yeah, um, everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so let me see here. What was it? Okay, I'm trying to think of a good example where I went kind of back and forth talking to someone. Because I do this from time to time. Oh, okay. It was like an LL Bean cardigan. And I had it listed for either 49 or 59.99 something like that right because it was pretty old it's like 30 40 years old and so the response i got the i didn't get an offer i got a message would it offend you if i offered you something below your listing price and my response to i don't know if it was a man or a lady was you know what i sell on here all the time all and i'll give you some advice always make an offer i told them just make that's why, I got that, that's why I got that button on there. I mean, they offered 20 bucks and my response to her, and I thought she, she thought she, I imagined her typing like this and holding her head like, Oh no, he's going <laughs> to like my, I'm, my response was, you know, oh, I really appreciate your offer. And I, what, if you can do me a favor and watch this item because if I don't sell this in, you know, six months or a year, I'm going to drop the price. I, I just told him that flat out because I with clothing yeah. I usually do that. I'll go s six months or a year. I'll just drop, 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 and I want to get rid of it, um, unless it's something super rare, which this wasn't. And then uh, so she said, "Oh, I really, you know, you know, this is really, I really appreciate it. You know, I'll keep watching it." And she really did that. That I had to watch her. Not that it means anything, but you know, why not? She watched it. She getting. Did she eventually? Did you get your full? No, this is only or last or week. Did? I think it was oh, like a week ago, one. maybe ten days ago. Okay. okay. So no. How not do you, yet. How have you handled in the past? Like you got that forty-nine dollar cardigan up there. They offer you ten bucks. Do you counter or do you just decline? Well, it depends. If did I just list that item, then I'll wait. Um, it say it's 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 been sitting for a month or two. Month or two, I'll consider any offer, but 
not taking their offer, but countering it. I try and Counter. counter everything. Yeah. Um, and the, usually the way it works is let's just say for a $50 item, they offer 10. Then I'll go, I'll say, okay, they went up 10. I'm assuming they went up 10 from zero. I'll go down 10 from 50. So I'll go back with 40. And then usually I'll get one of two responses. One, I mean, this is just recently. I'll get like a, well, actually one of three responses. One, they'll split the difference. It'll be like $25 offer. Two, they'll give me no offer, no response. Right, they have no response, yeah. Which is probably the most common thing. Or Correct. three, yeah. it'll be like an $11 offer. Like you get the jokers like 5 6% of the time. It's like, actually it might be a $9 offer. Right. So with that, then I'm saying, okay, all bets are off. You're giving me less than your first. Then I go to I go back to forty nine ninety five, or I'll go like forty nine ninety eight, or something like that. Uh, yeah, I've I've jacked up the when they've done that. I, one time I jacked up the offer double. Yeah. No, now it's a hundred. You know, because yeah. cause then it gets there. Right, and they're they're just like I said, jokers, time wasters on that ass. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, uh, I try not to take it personally. Fine. Yeah, but yeah, it goes back you, know, to boom, you hit it right there, Mo. That's the big key. Don't take it personal. Yeah, which is you a know, big and, thing for me. Which and well, because because this is our passion. This is our, you know, this is our livelihood. This is our passion. This is how. Oh, I can't. Can you believe? You know, because we and plus we know the value of it, the market value of it, or mm -hmm. what we think is perceived market value, and. We get offended, but do you believe what this joker offered me? Ten bucks for that item. I know it's worth fifty bucks. What's Go out and find it. I mean, yeah. uh, this is a segue. What's the worst comparison offer? Like the highest price you listed it and the lowest offer you got for something? Hundreds. Yeah. No, I mean, like something. Let's just say someone you had something listed for a hundred dollars. Have you got you got those one dollar, two dollar offers? No, not on on that. Uh, usually, like on a bigger item. Okay. Um, what I call a bigger item, a, 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 you know, like I recently had a, a electrical part, and it was listed for two fifty. Okay. And and I got an offer of one hundred and twenty five. Okay. I mean, so kind of a not a I, it, yeah. That's that's half, and this yeah. unit it was already about fifty to seventy five dollars below market because oh, I okay. I wanted to move it. So yeah. yeah. So I, you know, the, my first inclination on that is my first thought was, okay, well, he, is he lowballing me? Is he just starting the, so I said, all right, kind of your strategy. He's from 125. Let me lower it. I put it at 200 thinking I'll never hear from this person again. And 20 minutes later, they bought it. Nice. So, and I've had some pieces that are hundreds of dollars that I've gotten. Like, I think I had a jacket up one time. It was, I had it at 500 and somebody offered me like 50 bucks for it. Okay. And now I'm starting, I'm starting to think of all these messages I've gone back and forth with. Um, there's, okay, here's one. Um, I had a, I know nothing about, uh, pull cues. I found one at the bin uh, or is it? No, it was Goodwill. It was four ninety nine that I bought it for $4 99 cents. And I have, I don't know why I must've looked up maybe a brand new super or a super vintage one. I saw so, something listed for like 600 bucks. So in my brain, I'm like, okay, I'll list this for hey. 99 within right. an hour. I got an email, an angry email <laughs> from a guy. No, he's just said, what the hell are you thinking? This is worth $20 at Walmart. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And I left it up there. And then three months go by. And I'm like, maybe that guy was right. So then I didn't drop it to 20 bucks. I dropped it to 200. And then within a day of me dropping it to 200, it sold. Uh, wow. But I don't know if it was that guy or not, but I had still, don't, I never looked up what the actual value was. I kind of looked at yeah. similar ones. But, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's funny. Wow, that you guys get. that's that's wild because that you know, oh, okay, you know, twenty bucks. Come on, you know. Or, yeah. But the ang the angry part threw you off. That's why you went. If he'd have came to you and said, "Hey, hey, man, 
take a look at this. Here's, here's a couple options. What you're looking at is a $20 one. Nope. He took your price personal. Yes. I've, yeah, I've got that so. a couple of times. I don't know why. I've probably got it four or five times. And another one I remember was with new Garbage Pail Kids. You remember Garbage Pail Kids, the cards? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, apparently, they still make them, which I didn't know, or they started last year. And then I listed some. This is maybe Q4 sometime. And I listed them for a super high price. I think it was for, I mean, I got them for 29 cents, I think, a pack at Goodwill. And I listed them for, I think, $100 or $79, something like that. Something market, ridiculous. You listed a market price, yeah. I did actually make a mistake because the one I, I was copying the listing from or looking at the listing from was slightly different than mine. So mine was actually worth about $30. So the guy actually helped me out by getting angry with me. Because he's all, this is wrong. I can, again, Walmart. I can walk into Walmart and Walmart. get this for like, I think he said like <laughs> five or 10 bucks or something like that. Then I looked at it and then, good thing he said that because I looked at it and I'm like, oh, I think it had supposed to have like a hologram or something. And mine didn't. Or it didn't say it on the package. So I changed it real fast. I dropped it to 30 or 40 bucks. And I had like six of them. They all sold. Boom, 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 boom. And the guy emailed me again afterwards, right before the last one sold. And he said, you should know this. I've been in this market for years. So this guy's a reseller. And right. he said, I've been selling cards for you. You should get out of the market. You're going to get hurt by the big boys or something. He said something like that. I'm like, <laughs> you're selling garbage pail kids. You don't, you, <laughs> you don't scare me. <laughs> it's the garbage pail kid mafia. I think so. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. You get the well. I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm jealous. You get the weird ones. I'm not. I, you know, you you can keep the. I get. I get. Hey, what's this value or something? But that is some weird emails coming. I still list high. I list super high, especially if I don't know as much about something. And then I give myself some time to like research it. I watch yeah. the views and see if that. And then I'll drop it after a week. Well, and people may people will offer you know yeah. there, there's that's why we have a best offer button yeah is you know offer and man you get an offer quick on something like a, like that if somebody would offered you 60 on those on those garbage pail kids you'd have jumped all over it oh yeah definitely yeah. so you know or, or if they would even if they would have immediately offered you the 30 or 40 you got for them you probably would have said yeah 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 cuz those are those quick hits that that go so it's you know low balls are good low balls are bad but it's just part of the business yes i, mean, I always say yeah. my i guess my advice from this is test the market um i'll take an angry email as long as i'm not doing something fraudulent i'm not mislisting which he actually did there and i i got actually lucked out by his email and then uh you know as long as you're not you're on the up and up then don't feel bad i mean yeah just do it. don't do, or and and I've really, I have gotten a couple where they say, hey, this, you know, it looks like this is going on or something like that. And yep. it's usually another reason, you know, hey, thanks for the advice. Uh, I've never sent somebody an email saying, hey, take, you know, I, I, that's not my style is to, hey, yeah. you know, you need to do this or you need to do that. Um, because I, I tend to do my own research. So it's, it's yeah. kind of that aspect. But what's, what's amazing about it have you ever gotten these low ball offers and the worst negotiating tactic in the face of the earth? I can only offer you, you got a $50 item. I'm offering you 10. I don't have much money. Yes. Yes. I've heard, I mean, I've heard every story in the book. I mean, not every, but I've heard a lot of them and I'm sure some of them are right, but I, I I don't know how to take those. I mean, to be honest, I don't want to even respond. I don't. Well, and it's local sales are the worst on that aspect of it. Yeah. You know, hey, I really like this this chair, but or couch. I remember back in Mobile, I sold the couch. I, I really like this couch, and I need it. And I don't have much money. I got you know eighteen hundred kids and a crop. What was there? Eight four hundred kids and a crop in the field. Uh, <laughs> my wife left me. Yeah, you know, they they just pile it on yeah and it's you're supposed to feel that you know you you want to help other other people yeah but 
that is not a negotiating tactic, people. No, just and then, make uh, make the <laughs> offer and go. I'll, I'll steal this comment from somebody else. I read this somewhere. Um, I think they were, I was reading on Facebook, and they said if they were asking about something like you know baby food or like diapers or something they're using, then it's one thing. But if they're asking for like you know a discount, a starter jacket, or a, uh, you know, uh, a video game or something like that, then you're like, okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, then don't, yeah, I don't have much money, but I really need this. I think one of them was like a vacuum one time, and I'm like, just come get it, you know, just come get it. It's 10 yeah. bucks, yeah. you know, at, you know, kind of that aspect. But, yeah, what a horrible, that's that's a horrible negotiating. It, it doesn't. And it turns me out, there's so much e-begging going on right now. Yes. That, I think you just coined the phrase e begging. No, that's that's a no, I didn't oh, that coin that, that. Oh yeah, that's a thing, e begging. Okay. E begging. And, okay, uh, I gotta remember yeah. that e begging. You'll you'll see it. But you know, it, it, low ball, mm -hmm. another another tactic that people will do on a low ball, just give me the offer. Yeah. If, you know, it's okay, it's for fifty, I'm offering you ten. Don't tell me what's all wrong with it. <laughs> to don't tell me but i will tell this is the funny one i will turn around and tell you why i'm offering it especially if it's another reseller or a lot yeah um i will use that tactic of saying okay i'm gonna offer you this because of bang 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 yeah but on online just just give me your offer do you know there's a weird thing i'm i don't really know much about poshmark i've i mean i've listed a few things but I heard that you can send people offers if they've never even contacted you before. I think, I think if it's, so don't quote me on that, but you, cause I know on eBay, you can respond with an offer. Right. But I think with Poshmark, you can just like shoot emails out. Like I'll sell you this for 50. I'll sell you this for 30. And you can just keep doing that. I'm like, how do you know they're even looking for something like that or, I, I mean, to me, if I got an email like that and you said, okay, you can buy this shirt for 50 bucks, I'd respond with, I'll give you 10 bucks for it. Then I would lowball bucks. you. Yeah, because I'm not looking for that shirt. So yeah. leave me alone. Yeah, that's that's kind of. Yeah. So, so low balls are good and bad. Low balls are really good when you're buying. Low balls are really bad when you're selling. But you made a real good point, Mo. Try to turn it around. I think Chris. Lynn always, you know, every he counter offers every low ball, even if it's 50 cents. Yeah, and I, I used to take it really personally. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember I was like, okay, what do I do? And I like write it out, delete, 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 write it out, delete, delete, delete. I was that bad. I'm like, why? Yeah. I mean, they probably didn't even like, they probably wouldn't even respond regardless of what I said. They probably are on the next item anyway. They're, they're on the next. And, I've gone through this panic at times too, like just the other day when that electronic thing, um, or that piece of electronics sold, when he offered 125, I'm like, oh my God, did I just pass up? Because I got it for. I was about to say this. How do you, what's yeah. the mindset? Let's just say, for example, you got an item like that one. You said you had it up at 250, right? 250. I had I mean, maybe 10, bu 10 bucks in it. Okay, you got 10 bucks in it. And then you get an offer for 125. You know it's worth 300, 400. But in your, your my initial thought would be like, no, that's too low. And then you reject it, and then you hear in silence. Then what? I mean, that <laughs> the the decent. But what ran through my mind on that is okay. This is kind of a low ball offer because it's half on a big on a bigger ticketed item. But. Um, and then when I rejected it and sent the 200 and I was like, then as soon as that's done, I, I went to that, oh my God, I just passed up a hundred dollar profit. And I, I quickly thought, and you said, a good, you said it about it. I've only had it on for about three weeks and it's not costing me anything to sit there. And yeah. there's like, there's only like five of them listed. And I was the lowest one. There's maybe 15 of them that sold the past. So it's going to sell. Yeah. So it made that. Yeah, um, I did. I did. One time I found a reel to reel at a weigh and pay in Shreveport and I paid 18 cents for it because I they just 
used to buy it. <laughs> Gee. They'd look at your cart and say, eh, 10 bucks. So I had this whole cart full and I literally paid 18 cents for each item. And this reel to reel, if it had been working, was a thousand dollars. Jeez. Unwork, you know, um, it didn't, it didn't work, but for parts was four to 500. So I listed it for 500 and I got an offer within 30 minutes of 350 and I turned it down and yeah. went to bed that night, woke up in the morning and said, I just turned down $350. What am I stupid or what? Yeah. Texted the guy, you know, sent a message back. Hey, I'll take that 350. Yeah. You know, cause at that point that gets, you know, now I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm stupid with my money to me. Yeah. You know, well, you got the ball rolling again. What, so what happened? Yeah. You know, so, so kind of, and, and, and he, he took the 350. Nice. He, he, nice. he did get it. So, um, could I have gotten more? Sure. If I'd have waited. Yeah. But I, t I took that 350 and paid some bills, paid some, went out to dinner, bought a bunch more stuff, you know, I mean, so. See, um, what's the what, what's the ROI on that? Eighteen cents to three fifty. I think I added up one time like twelve thousand something. Oh, <laughs> it's like a hundred and twenty thousand percent or something That's like that. I mean, yeah, I, ha I off, have two stories in my head that I that I messed up on. It didn't turn out so well. One I think I told you about was a baseball pennant. I got these baseball pennants for like twenty cents a piece, like twenty of them. Right. On day one of listing, I got like a seventy-five or an eighty-dollar offer, and then I said I responded because I had it listed for like one hundred twenty-five. I responded with like a hundred crickets, nothing, and then so I lost that one. And that one is still not sold. That was maybe a year ago. Oh yeah, that's been a while, it's, had it? Yep, yeah, it's still sitting oh. there. I'm like, oh, you idiot. And then, oh, what was the other one? Oh, I'm blanking on the other one now. But I I know that feeling though, like. The initial, I, I need to, I always have to take a breath. Whenever I see a, uh, a, uh, an offer, regardless of what it is, I, I always try and take a deep breath, take a look at it. When was it listed? Yeah. How much did you pay for it? Those two things. And I actually put those in my uh, listing. I try and put it in the, the custom field now. I have started doing that. Especially with high-priced items that you get for cheap, because you might forget about, let's just say it's a vintage item that's, it's worth, you know, like your item, it's worth hundreds, but maybe you didn't pay very much for it. And maybe it's going to take six months to a year to sell. You might not remember what you paid for. Right. Right. So uh, that custom field yeah. comes in handy. <laughs> if you're like me, you may not even remember you had it. There's yeah. been times some, something sells and I'm like, do we, is that, I thought I sold, did, did I, oh my gosh, let's run to the, run to the room. And so you're looking for. Yeah. That happens with me with two different things, one or three different things. I have these bags of ties, these boxes of action, like loose action figures, and a bunch of like these shirts that are very similar. So whenever I have one that sits for like a year or two, um, every, I'll get paranoid. Like, oh, no. Uh, I mean, I've organized it to where I know it's there now. But for a while, when I didn't have it organized, that was it was panic mode. Get, your... <laughs> get it. So... Cool. Well, what's what's another topic we we kind of kicked around? Wanted to kick around. Today? All right. Oh. Let's see. We'll do let's see our last one for today. We'll say uh, a more upbeat one. How about how uh, getting into a routine will increase your sales? So this is kind of similar. Uh, kind of rounds out the day. Like, uh, what can you do to improve things? Let's say if things aren't going so well or or slow. Gotcha. So I mean, for me. Uh, we touch, touched on this a little bit. Uh, I need to change something. Uh, I, like I said, I kind of get in a routine. I'll, I'll list this same type of item or I'll source this same type of item, and I'll keep doing it, keep doing it, and then maybe it'll be slow, and then I'll have to change up exactly what I'm doing. For example, instead of sourcing shirts, I'll go to a different section in the thrift store or wherever you are, or if I'm – you know, researching, doing like I've started to do a little bit more um, online research and buying online, uh, and that is the easiest way. 
I think if you're doing OA, it's the easiest way to research different things. There's no excuse. It's not like, well, you know, they don't sell that at Walmart. They sell everything online. So um, if you can change up, maybe you don't do OA at all. Maybe you just do retail arbitrage. Try some OA. So change something and maybe you'll jog, you'll fall into something by accident. Um, sometimes, sometimes a new challenge will, will or a, a new thing will, you know, you're changing that, but you're, what am I trying to say? You know, you need something new in your life. Yeah. Um, so, right. So, you know, change that up, change that routine. But I would say don't ever take a, there's an old saying in sales, work closest to your money, where you know, if, if ties are your thing, don't take away from your tie time. Yeah. To, you know, put in, put in some time, take away something else. Maybe the stuff you're bored with. I, I got really, really bored doing clothes. Um, just, you know, cause we were scaled up on jeans. We were scaled up on, on uh, golf shirts and that just completely bored me. It gets and monotonous. I can, yeah, can get, it definitely yeah. Does. And, 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 you know, and then it was, we're talking two, three dollar off, you know, two, three dollars difference on offers. You know, most, we got excited if we find a $20 pair of jeans type thing. And for some people, that's great. I mean, you know, if that's your deal. I'm not busting it. I'm just saying that's a, for me, yeah. what works for me is, is the monotony of that kind of got, got old. Um, there's only so many ways you can, you can do. So I had to change up. And, you know, some of the stuff I get into is the vintage stuff. And, man, there's the research. You, you better start researching that, that, like you said, the vintage garbage pail. You know, yeah. even, you know, one could be $20, one could be $200. So, you know, that, so that kind of motivates me to, to do a change. Um, something I think about, like, getting into a routine of doing it, if you push yourself, going back to the, the mindset, you get into that routine of pushing yourself. If you pick an hour, do it and and try it. Even if, if you don't, if you don't hit an hour every day if, if, in that aspect, then rescale back and say, don't beat yourself up over it. You know, yeah. that's another human human aspect that we just constantly. Oh, you know, I didn't do it. I didn't do an hour today. Oh well, I'm I'm out. I'm out. You know, just, okay, well, I didn't do an hour today. I'll try tomorrow. What's the, you know, try, try, try. And get into that routine. What has, what has really helped me is my routine is like, okay, I wake up and immediately, excuse me, I immediately after coffee, I, everything, everything happens after coffee. <laughs> okay, let's look at the, let's look at the boards overnight and see what came up that I might be able to purchase. Okay, cool. Let's look at this. And then, okay, I've got to ship by two o'clock. I want my, my packages done by two o'clock. So I kind of get into that routine and that's really helped me on the aspect of, of, of pushing myself. Um, a, another routine I'm just starting to do is like Monday because the weekends are our busy time. And Monday, I, I just want to be like, man, it's Monday. We've had a busy weekend. We've bought, listed, gotten gotten everything packed up. But Monday's the day you need to go to the uh, thrift stores. Yeah. And it, it, that's just a gift. You know, that's where you're good. You know, Monday's a good day for thrift stores. And I just got to get better about that routine. I'm about 50% right now. And, you know, that that's one of those things that a routine will, a routine of going every Monday is going to increase my sales. Oh yeah, and then knowing that, knowing that that Monday for those stores is good because for me, I know certain stores are better on certain days. Um, if you can figure that out, that's gonna help you and save some time. Because I know, I forget which store it is on, there's certain thrift stores that on Mondays, it's not good at all around here. And there's certain ones that there are. I think the reason is, okay, for example, Salvation Army. Those were good on Mondays because they're closed on Sundays. Right. So they're getting us, they're rushing to get stuff in there. Right. And it's better, to be honest, if you go Monday evenings because, you know, if you go Monday morning, they they're the time. getting yeah. stock. 
but then Monday evenings was good, but not so it, it wasn't so good at like Goodwills and some of the other thrift stores, in, at least in my area, because Sundays and Saturdays get hit so hard that the shelves are kind of bare. Right. But then conversely, there's a couple savers I go to where weekends are terrible there, but then the weekdays, because there's not as much traffic going in there, they're really good. It's like nonstop, boom, boom, boom. You see the carts coming out. They like announce it, like, oh, you know, <laughs> Michael is delivering a, a load of jeans in the men's section right now. Like I heard that the other week, and like that's smart. That's smart. So, I mean, part, it yeah. kind of gets people to go, you know, oh, okay, and gets obviously. I'm sure they have an overload of jeans, and you know, that's smart for them to get rid of what they have surplus of. But uh, yeah, so know what like you you know that Mondays are good. Know if you figure that out, that's going to help you. It, and if you if you go, yeah, the day that you figure out, you know, the Monday you go, have your day that that's your routine. Yeah. And even like you said, go sourcing because there's sometimes we'll sit and go, well, let's we don't have anything else going on. Let's go sourcing. I don't source every day. I I just. I physically can't source every day. So um, even even in Florida where we had a great sourcing opportunity in the outlet, outlet stores or the, the way and pay. So you have to kind of go, okay, Monday, Thursday I'm sourcing. Saturday is always a given source. Friday here, I know you have a, quite a few good garage sales on Friday. Yeah, and they're starting now because the weather's getting a little bit better. Weather's estate nice. sales. Um, um, yeah, so if you can get to a good estate sale on Friday, I've started to – like this year and like last year, I started to see long lines at Friday mornings because people know that right. they wait till Saturday, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday, forget about it. I mean, it'd be empty shelves and, you know, because that was where I got a lot of good stuff going on Friday mornings. Um, the, even even pay – now, do they do the – it, a lot of places in the south they'll do friday's full price saturdays yeah, that's okay, basically even, yeah i mean they don't always announce it but that's kind of the gist friday you're it's gonna have a hard time negotiating unless you're buying a lot and then saturday it's kind of middle of the road because one hand it's a new day for a lot of people because they worked on friday right. but on the other hand you know maybe they do have they didn't sell as much on friday maybe and they want to get rid of it Friday is your day where you have a lot of professional pickers. Yes, come. it's all professional yeah, okay. pickers. Um, and you literally, like, I've, I've, that's where I've seen, like, arguments breaking out. Like, I was in this predison line. I took my daughter to one. And she was, like, four. This was, like, a year ago. I, think, I told you about this this morning. I got a razor. Um, it was, like, a chic gold-plated razor. And to be honest, I was going through the place really fast because it was a house, and it was very narrow. And it was kind of dusty. It looked like it had been closed for a while. So, and with my daughter, she was just, she was joking around, but I didn't want anybody to bump into her. So I had her real close to me. So I said, okay, you know what? I have to go through. I went really fast to the back, came back around the front again. And by the time I came back to the front, the front had kind of cleared out a bit, the garage, and they had these cases. And my usual rule of thumb is avoid the cases right away. Because that's the stuff that they're trying to sell you. They're going to up the prices. That that's the right. price that's listed with the high prices and all that. But then I actually heard someone say, you know what? Go straight for the case and ask, buy a lot, like a bunch of stuff, and just lowball the offer. And sometimes they'll want to get rid of it fast so they can put something else in the case. So I tried yeah, that. Yeah. I said they had these shoe boxes. And then I said, you know what? I'll take two or three of these shoe boxes. And then... He said, you know, a hundred bucks. And I said, um, okay, um, how about uh, I can give you like 30 bucks? He's on, I can't do that. I can do 60. We settled on 40 bucks for these four, three or four shoe boxes of stuff. And I didn't really even look that. I just kind of thumbed through it. It was like metal pieces of like, he had like belt buckles. He had like all these knickknacks type. He was definitely, I think, ex military uh, and probably a security guard as well because it said gotcha. the security, military. There was some NRA type uh, membership type stuff. Right. So uh, whenever I see that, I kind of like to look at that kind of stuff because that's people are generally when you're into something like that, you tend to keep 
good stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah. So this well, guy, you, you yeah, were, you you had the you, you had the knowledge of that. And that comes from from years of doing it, years of research, you know, research in, in that area. But that's that's where people like you and I differ. I see a lot of pickers that go for one thing, and you know, they go boom, they go yeah. straight to the dolls. They go straight. That's their niche. That works out great for them. It used to be me going straight to the video games. That was it. Straight for like, the yeah, line, straight, straight to it, boom, like, straight oh, to I'm the leaving. video games. Yeah. And when that happens. You know you can miss a lot and if you're yeah. if you're so going back to the story of Otep, you know what what did you end up getting oh, in okay that lot? so yeah. in that box there was this metal tin which i didn't really even look at till after when i got home and then it was a shit gold plated razor and it was still in it has like a semi metal aluminum case with it too and it looked really old so i looked it up and one had sold for like 120 130 so my mentality, when there's not much of something, once something is sold for say 120, 130, list it for 199.99, which is exactly what I did. It right. sold immediately. <laughs> so awesome. And then I'm like, wow, I spent 40 bucks for all of this, and this is already sold. And then within the next couple of months, I sold. He had some lighters. It like uh, uh, I forget what it was called. I could look. It was not a. It wasn't a World War II lighter. Maybe it's like a Vietnam era lighter. It has like this little hook on it. It's very small and very thin. Um, somebody else maybe would know the name of it, but um, and it didn't even work. But the same ones it sold between thirty and sixty bucks. So I sold that for like forty or forty-five, and I sold another one for like twenty-five. And the other one was just a. It looked like like a bic, not a bic, uh, uh, like a, just a cheap uh, lighter. But it was old from the '70s. It, uh, yeah. I forget the brand name, but if you looked it up, you would you. I think sell for ten to fifteen bucks. This one sold for twenty, mm -hmm. and I sold a few other things. And actually, I still have. So uh, you're up about three hundred yeah. bucks on this yeah. lot right now. Yeah. Easily, easily. Yeah. I got Add some belt ahead. buckles out of it too. Added still a state sale on yeah. the first day, and you negotiated with them. So that there's some training. That's that's some pro tips right there, and you yeah. get and. The obscure stuff um, can, like we've talked talking earlier today, yep. the weirder the better. Sometimes it's funny you say that because the guy in front of me when I first walked in, and I didn't go straight to the cases. The guy in front of me beeline straight for the cases, and he had these postcards. And let's just say these are alternative postcards, black and white, ex-military. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, and it was it was a stack like this. And the first thing he says, give me those postcards. And he took a whole thing. It was like a half a shoebox full, maybe a full shoebox. And he took the whole thing. So oh, I'll take those right there. And I, I didn't really think about it till later. And then I heard about it on the show, like, you know, if, you know, alternative postcards, uh, postcards in general do well, but these ones, like alternative lifestyle postcards, especially right. ex-military, you know, uh, it was just probably, they're black and white. So I'm guessing 40s, 50s, 60s, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or, yep. or even earlier, 20s, 10s. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember what he paid for the whole stack? Ugh, um, I just remember watching him. I'm guessing he paid like 40 or 50 bucks for the whole stack. So they were getting 40, 50. And, you know, there were some, some of those real picture postcards. Um, I, I picked up a stack in a, in a little folder one time. Yeah. And they, they were of Germany and Nazi Germany. Okay. And they were real picture postcards. I paid a dollar for them, and I got a hundred for the lot. Oh wow! And yeah, so you know, so that's that knowledge. That guy knew exactly. Yeah, oh yeah, that's worth this. This is you know, and if you can get one, if you can get one item to pay for that lot, the then rest, the rest is gravy. Of it, yeah, yeah, rest is gravy. It it just goes from that aspect of of getting. You know, we got off our routine subject, didn't we? But oh well. That's <laughs> okay. But, yeah. So you get, you get, well, and no, we can tie it back in routine of, of learning. Yes. You know, you got to uh, never stop learning. Never stop Research, learning. Looking stuff up. One thing, if you do get in a routine, if you get in too much of a routine and you're always selling, pick, pick an item that's tanked. Yeah. You know, well, uh, you know, we we know guys that have focused on Lego, and Lego can tank. 
It or, can. I mean, I know people do real well, and then I know the opposite to where they're, you know, just trying to clear it out uh, because, you know, right. for this or that reason, you know. So, so let's see, on, on taking routine and making it, just push, again, push yourself. Um, yeah, and then I guess something. one side note to that was um, one of the things at that garage sale is I couldn't look up anything. I had no connection. So one of the reasons I grabbed as much as I could because I figured I could just get the price down and grab a lot of something, the higher chance of me getting something good. And right. if I see anything, like I told you, how I pick my clothes in the thrift store, I look for something that's weird. Bright colors, odd-looking, strange-looking materials. Right. Does it look weird, strange? So that's the same here. In the case, like, what is that? Like, there's a lot of metal. I like metal. Metal stuff, shiny memberships of some kind dates company names all that kind of stuff like oh okay i don't know what it is but i'll find out eventually you get you get the overall sense of knowing who the who the uh, the 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 original owner was or yeah, that. yeah. this guy was a collector he, he liked to he was in groups he liked to keep his stuff so yeah you can get get a good so, so getting into a routine is it good can it be good can it be bad i think you got to keep I mean, it's good and bad, I would say. You've got to get into a routine so you can – you got to kind of – you know, like you said, you got to do some of the boring stuff so you can do some of the good stuff. Like I'm sure we all have items that we like to look for more than others. Maybe listing is not as interesting as sourcing. So you've got to get into a routine for doing the mundane, the boring stuff. Get it out of the way. Um, maybe break it up, do it in chunks. Um, but, I mean – you kind of want to. Um, you kind of want to think of it this way too. It's like the hardcore of it. Get it. You, you're constantly wanting to get into a routine that makes you money. Yeah. So you know, take those things out that are. Even if you do say, you know, I I love working in dung beetle. You know, d you know, dung beetle pick sculptures or you know, little beetle sculptures. But the beetle yeah. sculptures. Yeah don't make me any money so you, know, you gotta get away from it yeah that's true because i remember who was it that i was this, this is years ago i don't know if he still does a show dallas moore he was talking about how he likes he loves ebay but he uses amazon as a necessity so he'll like find 10 items to resell like replenishable items on amazon i think and he doesn't like doing it but that's his base that's, that's his, his bread and butter and he'll yeah. get those done so he can do what he likes after that. <laughs> so I mean, it's, that's it. That's a routine for him that works. He got yeah. into that routine, yeah. So he can, so he can do that. Oops. Yep. So, so oh, I think cool. I think we're good for today. Um, I, I kind of liked where the conversation went there. I wasn't sure where we were going, but we got some uh, good little nuggets in there. I think. So. Um, where can we find Russ online and in social media land on the social interwebs? Social media land on the interweb. That's been that funny joke from that from what was that? The um, in the wind guys, or you know the Michael. <laughs> yeah. What are those guys? Uh, oh, I'm blanking too. Spin spinal Tap. That's where. That's oh. where we got that interweb yes. thing. From, I, I think you crew I, that does spinal I, I wonder if anyone's gonna get that. I love Spinal Tap. It's one of my favorite movies oh, of all time. Man. Yeah, it's it's, it's, a it's great movie. way up there. So where can you find me? Definitely on Instagram, Roaming Pickers. That's um, right. And on uh, through our Facebook group. Yes, and we will post more in there. I know we haven't posted much in there, but uh, we will get back in there and post more in there. And then I'm on Instagram and. Uh, you know, reseller niche, and then on Instagram, it's niche reseller. Uh, if, I'd like to know who reseller niche is on Instagram, so I can't. <laughs> so we can swap names. Swap. <laughs> there you go. There you go. How's your Instagram account going? Uh, it's going okay. I think it cracked a thousand. I think we're nearly neck and neck, actually. Neck and neck. When I looked at yours, you're about the same. I I did notice this is a, a accolades. I did notice recently. I can post an item just a picture of an item i don't i don't know how to link it to it yet oh but you mean I an posted, ebay item. yeah an ebay item. i posted a picture of a stetson fedora 
They were, and, you know what? I was at an eBay meeting six months ago, and they were talking about that happening. I've never actually done it or seen it. I think I've seen somebody had a link to like their, their, had a mini. They used the mini link. Yeah, to, probably a link yeah. link tree or something yeah. like that. Yeah, something. But I posted a picture to that um, to uh, Stetson Fedora I had. Okay. Nice. And I saw a jump that day of views. So nice. You know it. Instagram is interesting. I mean, it's kind of, uh, to be honest, I think I'm on Instagram more than I'm on Facebook now because it's so easy. Yeah. Um, and then, you, like, literally, like, I don't do it as much. I should do more, like, uh, live videos because it's literally press a button. And I can't do that yet on, um, I can't do that on YouTube on my phone, but I can do it on Instagram. And it's oh, just yeah, that do second. Some live, do some live, live shots of some sourcing or. Yeah. Once I go yeah. to these estate sales or garage sales, I'm going to start doing some more there of those. You go. There you so go. then, I know, uh, oh yeah. So um, I was gonna say that um, we will be back next week, and we'll have a new topic. And if anybody wants to send us topics or send us questions, we would love to hear them. We've got a few already uh, that we're lining up here, and we uh, just want to say thanks for tuning in. And we will talk okay, to you cool. on the next one. See you guys. Okay.